What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Benchwarmer Sports and in today's video we're going to be talking about a recent controversy that just happened with my Cleveland Browns and this one NFL player who has seemingly destroyed his career overnight um and you know it's a really big story that just happened uh i believe in the last 24 hours it's just happened but um as we get more into this story uh you guys will understand that this has really been a long time coming for this player and that player that i'm talking about is perion winfrey he has been cut by the cleveland browns um after an alleged incident that has been caught on camera by a woman who claims that uh, she was uh, harassed and chased by Perion Winfrey, uh, who really ran barefoot in downtown Cleveland, chased after her, and uh, threatened her with a firearm. Now, the police say that, you know, there's in this video that, you know, there's no evidence of him having a firearm but you can clearly clearly hear him in the video say i have one on me which is you know most likely suggesting that he does have a gun on him um and you know threatening her that if she doesn't hand him her phone that he will assault her and hit her and all this other stuff and um you know we'll get into it here in the article but just a Horrible, horrible situation. Just a horrible situation all around for Perion Winfrey, who, you know, coming out of the draft was really seen as a high pick, or at least a high value pick for many teams. Um, but he did have character issues stemming back from his days at Oklahoma. Um, the Browns took a flyer on him in the fifth round. People thought that, you know, that was a really good, uh, you know, choice by the Browns with a high upside. If he could get his life together. Um, and you know, I, I to be fair, I do have his autograph. I got his autograph last season at training camp. And a lot of fans flocked to him. You know, he had the, the famous, you know, uh, stuff going on with the draft about him being hyped. He was screaming, you know, doing all this stuff about the dog pound, barking like a dog. All this other stuff. He immediately became a fan favorite. I mean, he was like hugging, hugging kids. Like kids were coming up to him. He was picking them up. I mean, I was right there next to him. He was signing autographs, saying, you know, he was excited to be here, he was excited to be an NFL player, excited to be a Brown. And really, in the last year, it's just gone downhill for Perion Winfrey. But let's get into the article here that we have from Mary Kay Cabin in Cleveland.com. From uh, her, she says, Browns release Perion Winfrey, an aggravated robbery suspect, after a woman accuses him of threatening her with a gun and assault so uh we get into the article here at least she gets in the article that uh you know the browns finally got to the end of their rope with troubled defensive tackle perry on winfrey they swiftly released him on wednesday morning after a woman posted a video on her instagram story saying winfrey threatened her with a gun outside the nine at east ninth and euclid avenue and assaulted her so uh you know if you're not from cleveland or if you don't know what the nine is it's basically just this uh residential uh, building that they built, I think, uh, 10 years ago or so. Uh, Johnny Manziel famously stayed there uh, when he was here in Cleveland. Uh, but yeah, that's basically where it took place, right by where Progressive Field is for the Cleveland Gardos. Um, that's where this took place, just to give you a, kind of a, a situation where this thing took place. But Winfrey can also be heard on the video threatening to hit her and her friend, saying, I will smack the shit out of, out of both of you. And you know I got one on me. So, uh, or you know I got it on me. So, obviously, like I said before, referencing that if he did not give them his, uh, her, their phones um, to him, that he would assault them and that he threatened that he had a gun. Now, it goes on in the article that, you know, uh, that, you know, they, he brandished a gun to him in his waistband. Um, but you know, you cannot see it on the uh, video itself, but you can definitely hear that it is Perion Winfrey. The girl in the video says, Perion, what are you doing? What are you doing, Perion? This and that. Um, but as we get in here, Perion Winfrey responded to this stuff that happened, um, yesterday evening, basically tweeting, the truth will come out. 
and possibly referring to the fact that the victim called him a derogatory name that upset him and apparently sparked the incident. He quickly deleted the tweet. Um, and it goes on later in the article that supposedly what happened, at least according to Perry Allen Winfrey, was that the woman and her friend tried to get his attention at the nine. And when he did not respond, I guess they called him a pussy. And he got mad at that and chased them out of the building. Now, we can all be honest here, right? Now, I understand you're a public athlete, you're a public figure, you're going to get recognized, you're going to be, you know, you're going to have more attention on you than usual. Um, but if you're a fan and you see a public figure or you see an athlete, and if you're trying to do something with them or whatever, and, you know, maybe they didn't hear you or something like that, why in God's name are you just going to call them a pussy? Or are you going to, like, insult them? I mean, let's let's face it, too. Perry Allen Winfrey is a huge dude. I mean, the guy's like six foot three, three hundred pounds. I mean, the guy is not small. The guy is a large man, and the woman in this video is probably what, like five foot four, a hundred pounds. I mean, I mean, first of all, really dumb idea on their part. I'm not saying that what they did deserved to have a gun drawn on them and their phones to be stolen from them. I'm not saying that, but look, we can be honest here. I haven't seen or heard anybody talk about it. That the if it's true what what they said and they called him a pussy and all this other stuff and they they made derogatory comments to him. First of all, why the fuck are you doing that? Second of all, you are in no position <laughs> to defend yourselves against a guy who's that much bigger than you. So calm down with that. Second, that does not mean that you know Perry on Winfrey. It's okay for you to brandish a firearm. In broad daylight, downtown Cleveland, where there's many people walking around, okay, I don't care if it's the weekday, it's a weekday evening and most people left downtown to go back home, I do not care about that. That does not give you the right to brandish a gun in someone's face, hit them in the neck, and take their take their property from them. That's just, It's not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay what, what, what's being alleged that the, the, the woman did. It's not, it's definitely not okay with what Perion did. But as we see here in this article, this is not the first incident that the Browns have had to deal with with Perion Winfrey. But uh, here we go. It says, in April, Winfrey was arrested in Harris County, Texas for a misdemeanor assault against a woman he was dating. But those charges were later dropped last month after he completed a pretrial diversion program. So in April, we got the story there that he was charged with misdemeanor assault. Um, now there was a lot of stuff going around about what type of assault was or like what, what really happened. Um, from what I gathered, I saw that really it was her trying to leave or something like that. And he grabbed her arm and he, he like grabbed her arm like really tight. I don't know if he like hit her or something like that, but from what I saw, at least from what I remember is that he grabbed her arm and they counted that as misdemeanor assault. And then she dropped the charges. I don't know, to be fair, I don't know if the woman in this incident is the same one in the April incident. I don't know, because uh, it sounded like she knew who he was. But I don't really know if she's a fan, the woman in Cleveland and the incident in Cleveland was a fan, or if this was one of the same people that he, that he knew in April and, and in Texas. I do not know. But let's continue on here with the article. The Browns stuck by Winfrey in the wake of the assault arrest, but that ultimately proved to be a mistake, obviously. Uh, Cleveland, police, public, Cleveland Police Public Affairs Sergeant Jennifer uh, Shiakia uh, said in an email response Wednesday that Winfrey is listed as a suspect in an aggravated robbery incident. First reported by Fox 8 News, it's the latest off-field transgression for the Browns' 2020 fourth-round pick out of Oklahoma. So... This one, I am kind of confused because if it's if they're saying that he's a suspect in an aggravated robbery incident, I would assume it's this video that came out. I would assume it's because of this incident. But from what I could gather, I'm it's very confusing because some people are making it out to be like this is a separate incident, this aggravated robbery incident. Some people are kind of like explaining it like it's a separate incident to what happened in the video i'm not entirely sure but um i would think that you know this is the same thing because he took her phone 
while brandishing a gun. So I would assume this falls in the category category of an aggravated robbery incident. But um, you know, they go on. He was just has a lot of stuff that happened with him in the off season and in and, and last season. You know, he was robbed at gunpoint himself last month with Greg Newsom, and he had their uh, Greg Newsom's car stolen from him. Um, you know, threatening to hit the woman again. Uh, you know, this just goes more into more into the uh, thing. And here we go. This is what the incident report from the video says. According to the incident report, the victim and her friend saw Winfrey in the lobby of the Metropolitan at the nine, and the victim's friend shouted his name. When he didn't respond, she called him a pussy. The victim stated that Winfrey became upset and started to approach them, so they left the hotel. So yeah, this is. It's a classic case of F around and found, find out. As really what happens. Don't No matter who they are, even if they are a celebrity, and no matter who this person is, do not just do that unless you are friends with them and close friends to where they know it's a joke. Do not do that to just some random person that you see. Even if it's a famous person, do not do that to somebody. Like, can we all just be honest here? This is really dumb on their part. <laughs> It's really dumb of you to do that to somebody. I don't care if they are a professional athlete. I don't care if they, if, if you know, they're a public figure. You just don't do that to somebody. I do not care. Okay. And like I said before, it does not, it does not make what Perion did any less horrific and downright stupid of him and, and terrible. Okay. But let's just be honest here. The people in this video and the people who got their phones stolen and the gun brandished on them, you're you're freaking stupid too, okay? Let's just be honest with that. We can go both ways. It's nuanced. But as it goes in more detail, when Winfrey followed him outside, the victim started to record him on her phone. He tried to take it, complete it with, th with verbal threats. The victim said that Winfrey lunged at her, striking the left side of her neck and yanking the phone away. Photos showed a red abrasion on her neck. Okay, so... There we get into the gun part. The victim said Winfrey pulled up his shirt and revealed the firearm in his waistband, a dark gray handgun. When Winfrey and his friend left the scene, the victim and her friend returned to the hotel lobby and called police. Um, and then we get into the part where, you know, the police were involved with him. Winfrey's, Winfrey called the victim's friend's phone when they were with police and she handed it to the officer. Winfrey told him that the females were harassing him and he took their phones. Okay, first of all, you can you can say that they were harassing you, okay? You can call you can say, hey, they called me a derogatory name. Just tell them to leave, leave me alone. Probably problem solved right there. Problem solved right there. The problem is you admitted to the officer that you took their phones. <laughs> you admitted to the officer that you stole someone's property without their consent. So there's your there's your admission right there that, yeah, I took their phones, but they were harassing me. All you had to do was just probably call security or whoever was there at the place to say, hey, these two girls are harassing me. Please tell them to leave me alone and tell them not to come back into the building. That's all you had to do. That's all he had to do. But instead, he took it up a notch and he did something that obviously probably he's got some kind of anger issue. Because this is not normal behavior. It's not a normal reaction, okay? The officer asked him to return to the hotel, but he said he didn't want to because he was a Browns player and was worried about security issues. Winfrey said he'd return the phones by placing them on a crate in an alley, which he did. Okay, so he gave them back their phones. But, like I said, this all could have been avoided and settled without having an incident go on with just go up to the security guard of the building or whoever and just say, hey, these two people called me a derogatory name. Can you please just tell them to leave me alone? And if they don't leave me alone, have them come out of the building, please. That's all you had to say. That's all you had to do. All you had to do. Now, we know from the April incident, this guy had to complete anger management courses for uh, allegedly assaulting his his girlfriend at the time, Okay. So he's already completed that stuff. He's got character issues in his past. I mean, a guy showed up late to practices all the time when he was with us last year. Uh, he got injured multiple times. They just they point out in the article later on. I'm not going to read the entire thing, but they point out later on in the article 
that, you know, he got a concussion because what he said was a scooter incident turned out to be that he couldn't drive in the snow. So he crashed his car and he got a concussion from that and a bunch of other stuff, missing practices, being sick, being like missing a lot of stuff. I mean, the guy was a headache. The guy's a headache. You get a lot of chances in the NFL if you are a good player. And Perrion Winfrey was given way, 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 way more chances than a lot of other people would get because he was a draft pick and a high draft pick, I would say. He got a lot more chances than most people in the NFL do. And he, he ruined every single one of them. He ruined every single one of them. I mean, I don't know what else to say about this. I mean, Perrion Winfrey just needs to get help. That's it. Perrion Winfrey needs to get help. He probably has ruined his career, at least for the short term. I don't know about long term. Maybe he can come back. Maybe some team gives him a practice squad signing or a preseason invitation or a mini camp invitation. I mean, I don't know. The guy has to work on himself, though. That's that's for dang sure. Um, because right now he's heading down the path of ruining the rest of his career and, you know, I mean, ruining his NFL career. That's pretty much the bottom line. He's ruining his NFL career. And, you know, from a guy who was a fourth-round pick who, you know, could have been a integral part of the Browns this season, could have been an integral part of the Browns' future, he fucked it up. He fucked it up. That's that's the bottom line. He fucked it up. He fucked everything up. And, you know, he has to bear the consequences of his actions. And what he did was not acceptable and is never acceptable. What the women did was really stupid of them. But that does not mean that, you know, brandishing a firearm and stealing their property is the best way to go about it. I mean, that's, that's pretty much the bottom line of what happened. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. That's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have watched all the way through, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Please like this video if you like this type of content, Cleveland sports or sports in general. Hit the subscribe button as well. We're at 616 subscribers. We're trying to get to 1,000. I know uh, training camp is going to be here in about two weeks. We're going to be doing some content uh, from the Browns training camp. That's going to be coming up here soon. And uh, if you guys are feeling extra generous, there's my cash app here at the bottom left of the screen. You guys can donate to the channel that way. We also have super thanks here by the uh, like button. It's a, another way you guys can, can contribute to this channel. Helps upgrade the quality of the content. We're going to be getting some microphones here for interviewing some fans. I really want to be doing interview type content here for NFL games that we're going to be doing this upcoming season. So we're going to be doing that. And it's all thanks to your guys, uh, your guys' support and, you know, just the amount of support you guys have given me on this channel. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys later. Take care.